Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Distance Learning, Circles and the Sine Ratio. All right, um, this is going to be a little odd and a little bit disjointed, but we've got a number of things we need to sort of talk about here and put into perspective. So I asked you to read your textbook before, and I asked you to watch some videos online. You should have a, a, a now a background of information that I can sort of work with. So let's see what we've got here. Uh, let's view, let's bring this in a little bit. Let's see. Not bad. Okay, so angles on a Cartesian plane. Now, let's explain a few things here. A Cartesian plane, this is actually Cartesian plane. A plane is a two-dimensional surface, something that goes in two dimensions. So maybe this way and maybe this way. So a piece of paper is a two-dimensional plane. Um, Cartesian. Well, there was a, na a guy named Rene Descartes. And Descartes actually has his name in the Cartesian plane. So they've taken the last part of his name, they, got, they dro dropped off the day, they've got the cart, so this is Rene Descartes' plane, and it's named after him because he invented it. He was the first guy in history, well, that wrote it down anyway, that took a number line and decided to start at zero and go up positively and go down negatively and took another number line and decided to go positive in the right direction and negative in the left direction, and he had them intersect at a 90 degree angle and this concept, this idea, is forever called in Western society the Cartesian, named after Rene Descartes, the guy who did it, the Cartesian plane. So we're talking about an XY axis. Now the true Cartesian plane has four quadrants. Um, in grade nine we specified mainly quadrant one. Now the quadrant names start here, quadrant one, because it was positive and positive. This is quadrant two, this is quadrant three, and this is quadrant four. Now, it always goes in that order, one, two, three, four, and we use Roman numerals to name them. Uh, we don't use our, our general numbers, one, two, three, four, and we can remember the Roman number numerals because that is one, that's two, that's three, that's five. So that indicates one less than five, and that indicates one more than five. So this corresponds to one, two, three, one less than five is four, five, one more than five is six. And they go on from there. I believe seven is and eight. I think I'm not. Sh I think nine is this. I'd have to check, and that would be ten. But again, I'd have to. Oops, sorry. So I believe this is seven. I believe this is eight. I believe this is nine, and I believe this is ten. But anyway, we only have to know up to one, two, three, four. Okay. So a Cartesian plane. So when I talk about a Cartesian plane, I'm going to be talking at all times about something that looks like this. The scales I put on them are indifferent. I can put any sort of scale there. And we're going to talk about angles in a Cartesian plane. Well, up until now, you and I have only been talking about angles in a triangle. So if I take a right angle triangle, then we would talk about angles in here, and they would always add up to 180 degrees, which means that this angle and this angle always had to be less than 90 in a right angle triangle. And then we got some pretty funky looking triangles, maybe obtuse looking triangle, and that's where this angle could be more than 90 degrees. But all in all, we could never have an angle, never ever ever have an angle that was larger than 180 degrees inside a triangle. Because once you did 180 degrees, you went from going this way perhaps, so going this way, and if we were to rotate that all the way around at 180 degrees, then we would be going in the opposite way. Now, if I stopped anywhere short of 180 degrees, anywhere short of 180 degrees, so if this was only 179 degrees, 
then I could make a triangle. It'd look pretty funny. It'd look pretty weird. These would be pretty small angles because they'd have to share. Both those angles add up would only be one degree because this angle here was 179, so that plus the other two must be 180. But the largest angle I could ever have was 180 degrees. Well, if we take that same idea and if we think about rotating, rotating what we're going to call a terminal arm. And what that is, is, is it's a starting point. So it's a ray or it's a length or it's something along the positive x-axis, along the positive x-axis. And if we think about pinning it right here so that it could rotate, so it could go around, then we would know that it could either come up this way or it could go down that way, but it could rotate around. Maybe like a spinner in one of those games that you used to play when you were young. So a little spinner that I click and it goes zoom, 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 zoom. And what would happen is that if it were rotated up to here, if it rotated this much, then that would be a rotation of 90 degrees. And if it rotated all the way over to here, then that would be a rotation of 180 degrees. Now, what if it rotated beyond that 180 degrees so that it went wee? Well, that would be 90 plus 90, which is 180, plus another 90. Well, that would be 270 degrees. And what if I clicked it and it went all the way around? Wee! Well, that would be 90, 90, 90, 90. Four 90s is 360 degrees. And it would be right back where we started from. So if I didn't flick it at all, if I didn't hit it, that would be zero degrees. And if I hit it and it went all the way around one time, that would be 360 degrees. So we now have this concept of angles that go beyond 180 degrees. It's possible to have an angle now of, I don't know, let's say 336 degrees. It would be all the way over to there. That would be an angle of 360 degrees. These are called rotational angles. Rotational angles. And I think it makes sense. It's a rotation from what we call a initial arm. That's a starting point. Initial. From, from a starting point. And the initial arm is always along the positive x-axis. And wherever it stops, we call that the terminal arm. Terminal, the end of the line, okay? So terminal arm. So rotational angle, initial arm, always along the positive x-axis, and terminal arm, wherever it stops, and the angle that it takes to get there. Now something else to keep in mind here, that I could have gone in the opposite direction. My rotation could have been this way. So to talk about that, we talk about rotation that's counterclockwise, so opposite the way that a clock goes, so this way around as being positive. So this is a positive rotation. And if we're going to have what's called a positive rotation, mathematicians love to have what we're going to call a negative rotation. And that would be going in the clockwise direction around. So it would be quite possible to talk about having an angle now, not only larger than 180 degrees, but 90, something less than 180. So let's call this, just for sake of argument, a 115 degrees negative, meaning that we rotated from the initial arm clockwise around 115 degrees, which would lead us in quadrant 3. All right, that's a pretty good um, introduction. Let's take a look at the notes that we have and we'll go from there.